Thank you very much, Ken. Uh, yeah, well, the Game Story 2019, I'll give you the short overview. So kind of a lot of people involved, but it's a lot of data too. Uh, so two of us are here. If you have any questions, just approach us. Oh, no, it doesn't work anymore. Now it works. Yeah, yeah, he got it. Okay. We're live. <laughs> okay, so our initial idea was that game streaming and esports is a big thing. So 2013, already two, uh, 32 million viewers were uh, uh, watching the finals at uh, League of Legends World Championship. In 2016, we had 162 million viewers accessing esports streams frequently and so on. And there is this guy, this crazy guy, Tyler Ninja Blevins. You might have seen him. Uh, he actually was the first with 10 million subscribers. Uh, he's into Fortnite and now he struck a deal with Microsoft to leave Amazon owned Twitch to go to Microsoft Mixer, a platform which nobody knew before. <laughs> and now he's streaming there. He lost most of his subs subscribers. And uh, actually, there is huge money inside that because Microsoft tries to get people from Twitch to uh, the Microsoft platform. So it's a big business. It's a lot of people actually watching stuff. And Counter Strike, that was the game of our choice, is a first person shooter and it's an esports game. It's rather old, it started in 2000. Uh, it's terrorists versus counter-terrorists. It's either placing or defusing bombs, rescuing hostages and so on. It is very, very specific uh, on the rules and very strict. Uh, you have several, uh, a match consists of several rounds. So it's a best of, what is it, best of 30? Yeah, best of 30 approach in the, in the league we are taking a look at. So you have to win 15, uh, uh, more than 15 rounds uh, and the players only respawn in between rounds so you just go there fight with your team and uh, if you die you come for the next round then you have to outfit yourself again so there's an econ economy component in there so it's not only running around shooting but it's also running around shooting earning money setting the money to to work uh, by buying stuff and being uh, working together as a team so that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, at Medieval we have, uh, or we came up actually with the game story task uh, two years ago. So it is the second time we have it. Uh, multimedia research tries to do research in relevant areas. And we actually think that games and game streaming are very relevant because it accounts for a lot of traffic on the internet. It accounts for a lot of entertainment streams, a lot of recorded videos. It already reaches m many more people than traditional TV and especially games in my opinion are replacing the thing everybody thought that interactive TV will bring so instead of being interactive with your TV you already have those interactive games and you can either be lurking uh, and watching games of others or you can take part at the same games or you can even interfere with other people playing the game so that's what game streaming is about so many people stream games they see what their audience does and the audience interferes with their type of play and then they change uh, that's a very interesting approach so it's actually really interactive on several levels and game story is uh, kind of the first approach uh, to provide an evaluation challenge uh, in this area so we have uh, gathered data from Snipe TV. So there is this company, Bid Moving, in Austria. Uh, it's a startup, and they uh, are responsible for transcoding and delivering video. And one of their clients is Snipe. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got uh, the data. And Snipe provided the data for last year and gave us an agreement that we are able to use it within the game story task. Unfortunately, our contact to Snipe uh, quit the job there and failed to connect us with his uh, next in line so we tried to reach the CEO and the CTO but uh, yeah we have lost contact unfortunately but we're using the same data and for this year we actually enriched it so what you typically have is you have multiple streams so where is it here are one two three four five players per team two teams one against the other uh, then you have the map overview uh, which is just a top-down view of the map and these two points moving around. And you have the commentator stream. If it's a pro mid match, then you have commentators, one or two, and the director who switches in between those views. The commentator's view is extremely interesting because you can actually see uh, when somebody is behind a wall. 
So you, you see more than the player and can infer more on the, on the game themselves. Uh, yeah, we have two teams with five players each. Uh, that is 10 video streams plus the map stream plus the commentator stream. It's very much like a sports event. If you have never seen it, take a look. It's on Twitch and everywhere. Uh, and see what the commentator does. He's kind of getting crazy about everything. So it's, it's really fun. Uh, the commentator stream also includes audience, interviews, uh, pre-game content, post-game content, and so on. So that's what it looks like if you just play all the 12 streams at once. It's really intense. So now it starts, yeah. So this is a particular event where a uh, player... The smokes go in. Flashbangs deploy. Can Mekko find anything? You better believe he can. Takes down Rain four and four. Kerrigan's taking a massive amount of damage as well, I believe, from an eight thrown in, but it's Flusher that could slide up. You said he needed another big one. He's got another big one. 17-17. I pull it back. So it's actually very interesting because it led to a draw between the two teams. Both are uh, really, really far ahead in the game. 17-17. Uh, to 17. So, yeah. Uh, one has to get two points ahead to win. So if they wouldn't have won now, then the other team, uh, if they wouldn't have won the round, then the other team would have won the match. Uh, yeah, this guy Flusher, uh, he actually did the interesting thing. He uh, eliminated three players at once, which is very uncommon actually for Counter-Strike because they're all pros. Uh, that's what it looks like for him. So as you can see, it's much more boring. There is no commentator stream doing the audio. And that's it, that's the in-game stream, so much less interesting. And the commentator stream is actually pretty cool compared, that's just the commentator stream. Ready and waiting, the smokes go in, flashbangs deploy, can Lecro find anything, you better believe he can. And they switch between the players, four four. so now it's Lecro and now they switch to Flusher. And now that's the guy who actually controls the game, Flusher, and that's now a replay. So they are replaying it and discussing it along to the whole thing. So the commentator stream is actually pretty cool. Let's see if I get it to full screen again. No, it doesn't like me. I often have that problem. Uh, the commentator stream is great, but the whole game with the post and, and, and uh, pre-interviews, it's something like two hours. So uh, that's really hard. Uh, and many people just want a summary, uh, for instance, like the goals, the best goals in a soccer event or something like that. So what we actually wanted to do in the first year was to create a game story, a story of five minutes for one game, which deemed to be quite a problem because it's not something you can train for. You get a train data set, you try it, but then we have a jury deciding on if it's good or not. So there was nothing for, for people trying to submit to game story uh, that they could get hold of. I'm, am I on the right path? Do, do I am doing things wrong or right and something like that. So what we actually did now is we decided that the things that are interesting within game streams are the replays. So commentators already identify this is a very good thing. We need to replay that and we can actually find the replays in the commentator stream. Um, and then refine the original game views from the player stream. So first, identify all the replays from the commentator stream, then find the original source in the player stream. That was task one. So we had to create additional data. So thanks go to Natasha, Simon and Chivi. Uh, they uh, created the ground truth where to find the replays for both the commentator stream and then the source and the players. And what we also found out last year was that the synchronization between the uh, different game views, so it's 12 game views, it's very bad. So if you have one frame in the commentator stream and you want to find the according frame in all the 10 player streams, you're something off with the metadata like 40 seconds plus or minus. So it's really, it's even in the next round sometimes. <laughs> so you're not matching at all. And we had a guy last year uh, who did that content-based synchronization and he provided us with all the data on the synchronization points. So the, the, the people didn't have to do that uh, for themselves. So for each round, the starting frame was noted out in the test and the training data. Okay, so there was a lot more data. And then for task two, we asked people for one single video 
which gives the story overview of a whole match. Oh, yeah. Uh, I will not go into details with that because nobody submitted <laughs> for the optional task. Everybody just did the first task. Uh, yeah, we, we actually could face those challenges. Uh, yeah, what we did for evaluation, uh, we went for uh, intersection over union or the Shakar coefficient. Uh, so if people find something in the stream and there is the ground truth, we determined the overlap and we uh, decided on two cases. So if there is an overlap of 0.5 uh, intersection over union, then it's a match. Uh, that's the first case. And if it's even over 0.75, then it's an even better match. And for both, we did the evaluation on precision, recall, F1 score. And then for all the found replays, we used the uh, uh, averaged uh, intersection over union to see how good they would be to find the source segment. Okay, so it's in two steps, basically. And what came out was something like that. That's an overview of all the submissions. Uh, the only thing I wanted to tell you about that, because the, the teams will present their results themselves, uh, the only thing uh, I want to tell you here is that the first three are really interesting in that sense that uh, that's how many replays you find in the stream. And the other thing has to be read in context of those, because if you find only one replay, but you identify the source very well, then this one is high. <laughs> Uh, although the precision is not very good. So they have to be read somewhat independent from each other and uh, still in context of each other. Um, yeah, well, what will be the next steps of Game Story? We are discussing to change the game, actually, if, if Medieval wants to have us host us once more. Uh, the other thing is that actually a lot have, has changed because uh, Counter-Strike, the client is free now, and you can actually open up uh, Counter-Strike and then you see something like that. So you can uh, replay matches that's uh, from last, no, that's from this year's uh, tournament in Katowice. Uh, that's the tournament we have in our data from 2017, but that th that's the one from 2019. And that's one of the grand final matches. And you can actually download them and replay them in your client. So what we can be doing is to actually get the data at a very high resolution, like full HD, uh, with all the match data and uh, we have to investigate how well the metadata then performs and how much data it will actually get because the whole tournament was something like 100 gigabytes in 360 to 240 resolution. If we go up with the resolution, <laughs> we might have uh, quite a problem there. Yeah, but that's something to go or change the game actually. Uh, but that has to be a very informed decision because Counter-Strike is interesting because it has 10 views on, on one uh, on, on one single game. That's really nice. Okay, just short advertisement, Image Clay. If you don't know what to do in between this medieval and next medieval, Image Clay is your thing. <laughs> we have flyers too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you have any questions about Game Story, if you want to know more, if you want to access the data, or if you want to give a guest lecture on, con uh, on, on computer graphics, uh, specific themas, just contact us and we have more than computer games, so we also have mountains, so come to Klangfurt. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>